So over the past month or so, I've made several videos discussing each of Battlefield 1's primary weapons and which tier they fall within within each class. Since then, I've received several comments asking for my own opinions on the sidearms, but since I'd had enough of tier list videos, I decided to move on to something a little bit bigger. So here it is. Cole FPS's picks for the top 5 secondary weapons in Battlefield 1 in 2022. Before we get started, I do want to take some time to address the selection criteria I took into account when judging this list. To start with, when it comes to secondaries, I personally believe that as a weapon designed to fall back on in times of need, each should fulfill and exceed within a specific role and or situation. I also believe that their statistics should be at least on par, if not exceeding, those within their same weapon archetype. And, as I do with all weapons, I tend to prefer overall versatility when compared to sheer dominance in one dimension. Timestamps to each weapon will be available in the description below, and if you have any thoughts, feelings, or intense emotional reactions to my listings, Please don't comment below as I'd absolutely hate it if you boosted this video's engagement rate. But with that all out of the way, let's get right into the video. Kicking off the list at number 5, we've got the Frommer Stop. Designed by Rudolf Frommer and manufactured in Budapest, the Frommerstop is a Hungarian long-recoiling, locked-breached, hammer-fired, self-loading handgun that would be used by Hungarian armed forces in a variety of forms between the years of 1912 and 1945. The weapon would feature a rather complex rotating bolt system that would strengthen the firearm's overall design compared to its contemporaries of similar calibre. To take advantage of this, Frommer would develop his own cartridge, the Ort 32 Frommer, that, although dimensionally identical to the Ort 32 ACP with the same 40 grain pellet, would include an increased propellant charge in order to exploit the strengthened lockup of the Frommerstop. During the First World War, the Ottoman Empire would request the manufacture of 200,500 Frommerstop pistols to aid the war effort, with the factory delivering around 140,000 by the end of the war. Exclusive to the Scout class, the Frommerstop falls within the fast-firing, low-damage archetype of sidearms, dealing a maximum of 26.5 damage per bullet at 449 rounds per minute. Partnered with a fairly rapid tactical and empty reload of 1.25 and 2 seconds respectively, the Frommerstop is almost perfectly suited for its role as the sniper support secondary capable of rapidly dispatching single enemies who engage the user at close range while transitioning between cover. While the Frommerstop is incredibly similar to the other class exclusives, the Modelo 1915, the 1903 Hammerless, and the Tachian Pistol M1914, the Frommerstop's existence within this sniper support niche lends the weapon the advantage, as demonstrated by its much higher usage rate in-game. While the Frommerstop is able to adequately compete at close range, the sidearm struggles to engage multiple enemies due to a combination of its 4-shot kill and 7-round magazine. This, partnered with the weapon's steep damage drop-off intrinsic with its weapon archetype, limit the sidearm's overall versatility, particularly when compared to the secondaries placed higher upon this list. Therefore, the Frommerstop rests comfortably here at number 5. Moving on to number 4, we've got another Scout exclusive handgun, and my personal sniper secondary of choice, the Mars Automatic. The Mars Automatic Pistol was a semi-automatic pistol developed in 1900, and distributed by the Mars Automatic Pistol Syndicate, which would cease the weapons manufacture seven years later in 1907. The handgun featured a unique, long-recoiling, rotating bolt action that ejected spent cartridges to the rear of the weapon. Its feed mechanism was also unusual in that it would pull cartridges out of the magazine backwards. The Mars Automatic Pistol would receive consideration by the British War Office as a potential replacement for the Webley and Scott revolver. However, it would be rejected due to what was deemed unacceptably large recoil, considerable muzzle flash, and mechanical complexity. The weapon would soon fade into obscurity, and has since been deemed a collector's item due to its rarity. 
In terms of in-game use, the Mars Automatic is perhaps the closest thing to a revolver with a detachable magazine. The handgun has the highest stopping power and magazine capacity of all sidearms, a factor balanced out by both high recoil and a low rate of fire of 199 rounds per minute. Yet, unlike other sidearms, the Mars' maximal damage output is not the most exciting aspect of the weapon. In fact, its minimum damage is. Past 30.06 meters, the Mars drops to 23 damage per bullet, which, when combined with the regular chest shot damage of most sniper rifles of 80, makes the weapon a one-shot cleanup at all ranges. This incredibly unique damage profile makes the Mars best suited for more of a medium-ranged role, picking off enemy players after damaging them with your primary weapon. Contrastingly, in one-on-one -on -one scenarios, the Mars can be challenging to make work due to its fire rate. While it is a consistent three-shot kill, or two-shot if you mix in a clever headshot, the weapon really struggles up close compared to most other secondaries and will easily be out DPS by well-placed fire from a Fromastop wielding scout. However, in the hand of a player adept at positioning with accurate aim, one can straight up dominate servers with the rifle shot Mars cleanup combo. Therefore, I will leave the Mars automatic at number four. To get the top three started, I've got the M1911. The M1911, or as it's also known, the Colt 1911, is broadly considered as one of the greatest semi-automatic pistols of all time. Chambered for the Ort 45 ACP cartridge, the single-action recoil-operated pistol was designed by John Browning and would have its basic design widely copied, resulting in its operating system becoming the preeminent type of the 20th century. The pistol would serve as the standard issue of the US Armed Forces from 1911 to 1985, procuring roughly 2.7 million copies during this time span. It would go on to serve in both World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War before being replaced as the standard in 1985 by the 9mm Beretta M9. Despite this, the weapon has yet to be completely phased out with modernized variants of the M1911 still seeing use in some units of the US Army Special Forces, Marine Corps, and Navy to this day. The M1911 is immediately available to all classes in Battlefield 1, and is the most versatile sidearm in the game. Dealing a maximum of 35 damage per bullet, the weapon is capable of a consistent 3-shot kill up to 10 meters. While its fire rate of 300 rounds per minute and 7 round magazine falls around the middle of the pack, the weapon has one of the fastest reload speeds in the game, with a 1.16 second tactical and 1.7 second empty reload. Therefore, while it fails to truly excel in any category outside of reload speed, it performs at an above average level across all facets, allowing the weapon to seamlessly slide into almost any role and or playstyle outside of the medium range finisher that is the Mars Automatic. Furthermore, unlike the lower caliber sidearms, the Ort 45 ACP cartridge retains its damage across range better than most other sidearms, allowing the M1911 to remain a 4-5 to five shot kill within the medium range territory. The M1911 is also available in a suppressed variant, which, while it doesn't offer any real statistical advantage, does reduce the sound of the weapon allowing the player to more easily hide behind smoke and or cover when surrounded by enemies. While the M1911 doesn't have one true gimmick or attribute that uniquely separates itself from the rest of the competition, its ability to do a little bit of everything while still retaining elite reload speeds truly elevates the M1911 above most other secondary weapons in my eyes. Therefore, I have the M1911 as the third best secondary weapon in Battlefield 1. Moving on to the runner-up position, at number 2 I've got the Obrez pistol. The term Obrez is actually the Russian equivalent of the phrase sword off, and as such is commonly used to refer to an extensively modified rifle that has been cut down to a shorter length. Commonly removing all but the last 4 to 8 inches of the barrel, as well as most of the weapon's initial buttstock and front sights, 
The practice would result in a considerably lighter, more concealable firearm, at the cost of both weapon accuracy and range. While the soaring off of service rifles would be seen on most fronts of the First World War, particularly as trench raiding would become increasingly prevalent, the so-called Obrez is most commonly associated with the Russian Civil War, which is where DICE would draw their inspiration for Battlefield 1's Obrez pistol, with the sidearm being a cut-down version of the Russian mosin nagant M91 rifle. In terms of performance, the Obrez pistol is unique amongst other sidearms as the only secondary to operate with a bolt action. While its 38 rounds per minute fire rate is the worst in class, the Obrez actually has the highest time to kill of all pistols, thanks to its ability to one shot to the chest within 10 meters. Furthermore, sharing the Mosin Nagant's bullet caliber, the Obrez is able to one shot to the head even if only up to 30 meters. However, utilizing the weapon as a pocket sniper is unadvisable due to its 390 meters per second bullet velocity, even if this figure is still above average compared to other sidearms. Alternatively, I prefer to think of the Obrez as a World War I five round pocket shotgun capable of simply deleting enemies that dare to push too close. While the Obrez is perhaps the deadliest secondary in the game, oftentimes being able to save an individual's life in critical situations, the incredibly low fire rate and slow rechamber animation do limit the pistol's versatility, particularly when paired against my number one selection. On top of that, as the weapon reloads from stripper clips, the Obrez reload time varies depending on the number of rounds left in the magazine, with the weapon only being capable of full reload with one or less rounds remaining. This further harms the weapon's versatility, punishing you for missed shots, especially when placed in scenarios with limited time between multiple engagements, such as those found during operations. Due to these general critiques, I cannot place the Obrez at number one, despite the fact that it is my own most used sidearm in Battlefield 1. Therefore, it shall remain as the runner-up at number two. Before moving on, I do wish to briefly address an honourable mention, and that is the Peacekeeper. While the Peacekeeper is adored as one of the coolest final Easter Egg rewards in Battlefield franchise history, the weapon's performance falls most in line with the Assault's Gasser M1870, albeit with the Obrez's ability to one-shot headshot at close range. While this does make the weapon a reliable two-shot kill that can be fired faster from the hip as the player fans the hammer, this also means the Peacekeeper is gate-loaded, requiring the player to manually eject remaining rounds before reloading. As this is also a dynamic animation, it is unable to be cancelled. Furthermore, the weapon remains by far the hardest to obtain in the game, as demonstrated by the fact that I don't actually have it on my own PC account, and many players, myself included, simply do not have the time nor patience to unlock the weapon. However, for those dedicated enough to acquire it, the Peacekeeper is well worth the grind as BF1's quintessential Midwestern powerhouse, sporting some of the coolest animations ever cooked up by DICE's development team. If you've got the time to unlock it, I highly recommend chasing the Peacekeeper, but for me, and this list, it shall remain as only an honourable mention. Finally, to finish off the list, I've got perhaps the most aggressive, class-altering revolver in Battlefield 1, the Auto Revolver. The Webley Fosbury self-cocking automatic revolver was a recoil-operated revolver that would see limited use in the First World War by British officers who would purchase the firearm for private use. Produced by the Webley and Scott Company from 1901 to 1924, the weapon is immediately recognisable by the zigzag grooves etched into the cylinder. The weapon achieved smooth, consistent rapid fire by utilising the muzzle energy of fired bullets to both cock the hammer and rotate the cylinder, thereby removing the manual action that plagued most of the revolvers of the time. While the revolver was originally intended to be used by cavalry, it would be formally rejected due to its weight, length, complexity, and the costs associated with its production. As such, only around 5,000 models of the weapon would ever be produced. While the Auto Revolver is exclusive to the Medic class, it perfectly complements the variety of self-loading rifles which, while are exceptional at medium to long range, can struggle in close quarters. 
The auto revolver's maximum of 52 damage per bullet allows the weapon to consistently two shot to the body at close range. This two shot capability stretches out to 10 meters, with damage dropping off considerably past this point. While the two shot capability does little to separate the auto revolver from others in its class, the weapon's 224 rounds per minute fire rate and rapid reload speed of 3.17 seconds give it the edge over most of its counterparts. However, while the Mark VI revolver does best the auto revolver in terms of reload speed, the difference in fire rate influences the outcomes of more engagements, particularly against more apt and prepared players. Although, you can make the argument that the weapon's small magazine of 6 rounds and high vertical kick limit the weapon's versatility in extended engagements, these issues are pervasive with almost all of the revolvers in Battlefield 1. As such, the Auto Revolver offers arguably the best blend between raw damage performance, rate of fire, and reload speeds. On top of that, as many of the medic's primary weapons excel across extended ranges, the close range brilliance of the Auto Revolver perfectly complements the kit. Therefore, I have the Auto Revolver as the number one secondary weapon in Battlefield 1 in 2022. Thank you all so much for making it to the end of the video. As always, if you liked the video and want to see more content like this, make sure to like the video and subscribe with post notifications turned on so you don't miss the next Cole FPS video. Also, if you have any thoughts, video suggestions, and or just want to talk Battlefield with myself and my community, feel free to leave a comment below or join my Discord. The link to that will be in the description. Anyways guys, once again, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.